It made headlines around the world. Chris Watts murdered his picture-perfect family in Frederick. More than two years since the killing of his pregnant wife, Shanann, and two daughters, Bella and Celeste, the home where they live still sits vacant. Well, tonight, with renewed interest in the case, we go back to that neighborhood, and Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski found it's going to be tough to sell the Watts property. Driving by, it looks like the all-American home. Two stories, five bedrooms, 4,000 square feet, in the cookie cutter suburbs of Frederick, Colorado. It's a beautiful home. But when you know what happened inside, everything changes. There's no mystery about what happened there. Bankruptcy attorney Clark Dre says there's no mystery because it horrified the nation. The neighborhood knows what happened there. Potential buyers know what happened there. First breaking new horrific details emerging. Chris Watts strangled his pregnant wife, Shanann inside their home after an early morning fight. Chris told her he was having an affair with a coworker and wanted out. The same morning, Chris murdered his two daughters, three-year-old Celeste and four-year-old Bella. He smothered them and tried to cover it all up. But you know they're not. Uh, I hope they come back home. Mm -hmm. And I don't know they're not coming back home. As Chris lied to investigators, he also went before our cameras, begging for his family to return. Just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just please bring her back. Chris later confessed to police after failing a polygraph test. He's now serving multiple life sentences. But the fate of 2825 Saratoga Trail sits in legal limbo. It's a beautiful home. I would hate to see him just take it down. Neighbors are scarred by what happened. No one wanted to show their face on camera or use their real name. They all told me they didn't want any more attention. For the, the neighborhood, it's just kind of difficult. This woman, who lives right next door, says the recent Netflix documentary spurred new interest in the home, and not the kind anyone here wants. I think about, like, did I cause this? Like, literally hundreds of cars have come by. They're curious. They've been coming from out of state. They've had so much activity. Neighbors put up no trespassing signs and are urging people not to leave any more memorials on the front porch. Would ask that people just be respectful. Today, the house many see as unsellable is deteriorating. The grass is dead and vacancy notes are plastered to the door. People come by late at night. Around back, memories of the family home are frozen in time. The girl's swing set blows in the wind and a stuffed animal lies in the grass. There's a fascination with it. It would be a great home for a traditional family. But Dre says it's very difficult to overcome the stigma. Do you think it's fair to say it's an unsellable home? I think from a legal standpoint, it's very difficult to get that property sold. Shortly after the murders, the lender that owns the mortgage foreclosed on it and put the house up for auction. But nobody wanted it, so Weld County took it out of foreclosure. It's a strategic decision that the bank has made. This, is, this doesn't have to be our problem. We're okay not getting paid on this property. The couple bought the house brand new for nearly $400,000 in 2013. According to Zillow.com, it's now valued at close to $600,000. I think that the property has been mismanaged. A price. And, uh, Real estate appraiser Orel Anderson says is way off base. Way too high, as if this never occurred. Anderson says to sell the home, they need to heavily discount it. He's talking a 40% price cut. You see a pattern that tells you that when there are children involved in the murder, the discounts go higher. On top of that, he says the seller needs to make the house look different. Repaint it, change the address, add new plants, anything to wipe away the memories. Memories that are kept alive through photographs and videos in the media. And that's been exacerbated because it's been vacant for so long. The mortgage company, the lien holder, the state, any of those parties can take action on the home and none have felt inclined to do so. Several creditors have also placed liens on the home. The largest comes from Shanann's parents. They have a $6 million lien on the house after they won a wrongful death suit against Chris Watts. It would make it very difficult to sell the home at a reasonable, reasonable price. Dre says for it to make sense, a buyer will have to make a deal with the lien holders and have enough money to cover the original mortgage. Who would want to start their life in that house? Michelle Pate lives close by and would like to see the house torn down. Maybe made a little park out of it or something. While next door neighbors are hoping for new energy and a new beginning for a home with a story that shocked the world. Once um, enough time has gone by, I think probably just another family will move in. I'm Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski.